Asia. When you look at Italian politics, we still don't have a government, mm. but we could see some kind of populist alliance between Lega and the Five Star Movement. What does that mean for Italian economics? First of all, we don't know. We don't know whether this is going to be the outcome of uh, the coalition, and we don't know really what they're going to do. What we do know, I think, are sort of three lines that are clearly coming from the votes of Italians. And number one is they want a different fiscal policy. Number two, uh, they want a replacement of the establishment, and not just the political establishment. In, in 1992, there was uh, Operation Clean Hands, and the idea was... Uh, uh, the entrepreneurs will replace the politicians and yeah. everything will work fine. Yeah. And we've seen an entrepreneur in politics for the last 25 years did not work that well. And I think the United States are experiencing that as well. So I don't think that's a solution. And, and number three, I think there is also a big pressure to change the policy in Europe. Okay, but I'll, an entrepreneur in the White House, if you <laughs> want to call President Trump that, he's negotiating. He's negotiating with China, mm -hmm. right? And he's trying to broker a deal. Will he succeed? Will the EU also go along with the U.S. trying to put pressure on China to be more fair? I think that... Uh, the, there is a fundamental problem of China being taking advantage of the situation, appropriating technology, etc. So I think there is an argument to be made to change a bit the trade policy. I don't think that the strategy followed by Trump is the right one. I think that uh, uh, creating this huge tension uh, will naturally lead to a retaliation. Uh, the Chinese are very sophisticated in the way they negotiate. I think Trump uh, is really the elephant in the room. Uh, Dr. Zingales, good morning. Tom Keene in uh, New York. And one of the things I think we're focusing on uh, is the idea of what China can do. How surgical can they do? Can they really go after Boeing or is that just cheap rhetoric? No, I think that people, uh, and not just China, but uh, every partner has learned how to uh, be surgical and uh, not only target uh, uh, companies, but target companies in district of politicians that are particularly important and are for election. And I think that uh, uh, of all people, the Chinese are probably the most sophisticated in this game. So it can be pretty painful, even politically, for the United States. Within the microeconomics, the acclaimed microeconomics of the University of Chicago, is the idea of leakages within any system. What are the leakages within the certitude that the president has and Dr. Navarro have in their trade theory? What are the leakages in that theory, the leakages that they don't see? Oh, I think that the, the biggest problem I see is uh, favoritism. I think that uh, uh, a protectionist uh, policy is bad enough, but a discretionary protectionist policy is even worse. When Trump introduced uh, uh, tariffs against steel and aluminium and then decides, oh, but you are exempted because you are my friend, and the other is exempted because he's my friend, then we become uh, sort of really uh, a crony policy that is even worse than a protectionist policy. Really? So you think it'd be better to just put tariffs on everyone? Oh, I mean, I, I, does that not mean that we'll see a recession? Uh, I think that uh, doing discretionary policy leads to really a corruption of the rule of law and uh, a big attempt to try to sort of get into the favor of the president, which is exactly what the president wants, but is not very good for the rule of law in the United States and in the world. Okay, Peter Navarro advocates to go after Germany because of their surplus. Should they? I think that uh, there is an issue that uh, mm. Germany has a gigantic trade surplus. And I think this issue should be addressed. Is it addressed by going after it that way? No. Because at the end of the day, uh, Germany can claim that they are doing uh, really free trade policy and etc. So I don't think you want to uh, let uh, the higher position, the higher road to Germany and then go after in a very protectionist uh, uh, way. Okay, so should Brussels go after Germany? And if you say yes, you know, what legitimacy, for example, does Italy have to go after Germany if we have a lot of problems here in this economy? I don't think that the question is going after. The question is, are we a European Union? If we are indeed a family, we should discuss things like in a family do. Uh, with some tension, but you don't go after your husband, hopefully. You actually discuss with your husband. So if you have a family, you have to discuss with the partners and say, look, uh, Germany is exporting deflation in Europe and in the world. So we cannot continue that way, and we need to negotiate a different outcome.
Luigi, I want to be sure we get to this. I, I don't know what the schedule is there in Italy over uh, spritzers uh, in the next hour. Dr. Zingales, is Italy going to get a government? Yes, in the sense, Germany took six months to get a government, so I, I think we have plenty of time. So like a year. I mean, Francine, really a year to get a government? Francine, what do you observe over there in the ability to get a government? I mean, their negotiations are continuing. They're going to see the president, Tom. But it could actually, we did speak to Paolo Scaroni the day after the election. He was saying it could take up to 12 months. Luigi, the concern is that Italy needs reforms. Italy was on a path of getting a little bit better if you look at growth and unemployment. So can we really live without a government for the next 12 months? I don't think it's going to be 12 months. I think that uh, there is a impasse because uh, uh, the former prime minister, Renzi, has basically taken out uh, the Democratic Party from any negotiation, and I think that's a mistake. But, that's, but he did so badly. Uh, yes, but the fact you did badly doesn't mean you, you shouldn't talk to other people. It's like when you lose the, the, the match, you don't go away with the ball, and that's exactly what he's doing. And, uh, and the other thing, which I think is, is the right thing, is the, the Five Star Movement puts as a precondition not to have uh, Berlusconi in the coalition. And, uh, and Salvini needs some time to ditch Berlusconi. So I think that uh, we need some time for Berlusconi to be ditched and for the PD of Renzi to actually come to his, his senses and decide to see whether they can enter a coalition. So I will, it will take some time. As I said, Germany took six, six months. I think the problem is not how long will it take, but how good the coalition will be. And if the outcome is like in Germany, where you have a referendum, you have a plan, you have uh, a, a, a long-term government, I will take six months, I would take even a year for five years of a good government, rather than a quick government with no plan and that lasts six months. Okay, but very quickly, in one word, what's the likelihood of that, of having a government that, that stays for four years, not even five? Actually, I don't think is, is that small. I think that uh, uh, the alternative would be an early election with a majoritarian system where there would be a clear government. So I don't think it's that, that bad.